giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Well, Destination Deep Space has had talks about great offense and some pretty good defense. Uh, I know you wanted to talk about how to avoid defenses and a sound strategy you saw take place up at the PNW this past weekend. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, we'll jump right into me. Uh, so, uh, man, I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch PNW uh, this weekend, but I, I definitely did, and I was blown away. Uh, it When I started watching Destination Deep Space uh, earlier in the week, uh, like any week one event, it starts to get very depressing at some point because it's just <laughs> slow. You know, not a whole lot's going on for things. And then I saw PNW. There's a couple other ones as well, but I saw PNW and the PNW playoffs, and holy cow, like this actually got pretty exciting. A lot of different strategies we had. I mean, we had swerve drives, we had ramp bots, uh, we had, uh, uh, I saw this at Ontario as well, but a lot of just like unitasker bots that are just either doing hatches and that <laughs> sort of thing, which is pretty cool. And, you know, in my, in my day, you don't want to really have unitaskers and cooking uh you know i was guy guy fieri was ever like don't ever buy a unitasker tool but i'll tell you what buy a uni, unitasker bot uh for your second pick going into the playoffs here but we're going to talk about uh pnw mount vernon uh semifinal uh four uh which uh in this case uh the red alliance uh won the first one so this is number two versus number three you have uh 1983 skunk works uh 5803 apex robotics and 4579 robo eagles and red alliance and they're going to play up against the Blue Lions in 2928 Viking Robotics, 4309 4H Botsmiths, and 2980 uh, the YB Island Wildcats. Now, guys, if you when you hear these uh, two alliances, uh, which ones have you heard of with teams and which ones have you not heard anybody on any of the teams for this? I wouldn't say it's nobody, Tyler, but I have heard of 5803 Apex, 1983 Skunk Works and uh, wasn't 2928 world champion like two years ago? Something yeah, they were like in 2017. They won South. Oh, you're Champs. right. I, for, yeah. I forgot about to, uh, They weren't able to go to the Festival of Champions. With yeah, Lee and Lee, then so. 4188 got to go instead. Yeah. Um, yeah, but to me, I'm looking at like Red Alliance. These are like teams I widely recognize, right? Blue Alliance, I, mean, okay. I, I guess I miss a world champion there, but like to me, it's like, <laughs> nah. so, sometimes it's hard to recognize, you know, they sneak in there. Yeah, for sure. It's hard to recognize the backup bot sometimes. Yeah, that's the, were they the backup bot? They so. were Robot 24, and 54.99 was Robot 25. I got okay. it. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, here's a couple things I want to point out. Um, we're going to talk a lot about uh, these both alliances, but usually in a lot of fun analysis, we tend to break down more on the side of, you know, this is what this alliance did. Here's a strategic play, and we're going to get to some of those. But I want to talk about a situational uh, area here. So this is kind of a mini fun analysis. Uh, and this is going to be more talking about what to do uh, against some uh, different types of defense out there that we see in this match. And you're going to see 4579 uh, for the Red Alliance. Uh, they're the uh, tall bot uh, that's over on the uh, left-hand side right on this platform right here. Uh, this robot's going to just go, and, and to me, they're kind of that average defensive bot where what they do is they just kind of spin around and wildly bash in the teams. But something I want you to notice is they're going to camp out a lot right in this zone right here. And as we watch this, watch how the Blue Alliance handles different types of play during this. So we're going to uh, we're gonna start the match here and just kind of let it go through uh, the Sandstorm area. But I really want you to watch the defense of 4579 and the counter uh, defense of the Blue Alliance of what goes through. Uh, so Sandstorm, we won't talk too much about us. It. it just kind of uh, wraps through. And we're going to pause uh, right at about uh, 1.30. So you're going to notice here that uh, 4579 uh, is already moving over and getting ready to play uh, some defense right there, uh, bashing into the blue alliance robot. I, I, the two nine two eight bot and two nine eight zero robots are a little confusing for me sometimes. Try to read the bumper numbers on this, but uh, you'll notice they immediately go over uh, and play uh, defense. And you'll notice where they're guarding is going to be kind of in this this general zone area, like right in between these two circles. They're not going to really move uh, up into this top. Uh, rocket area to try to, to try to play any defense against something like this. So very interesting uh, kind of decision making ahead of time. It worked, you know, for them in the first match in the first semifinal where 45 39 didn't even get all the way over until later uh, and they won the match. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the blue lines definitely works on fixing it. So uh, you're going to see once again, they're only guarding that area and we're going to let it run a little bit and we're going to run through about 104. And when that happens, I want you to notice this interesting pick. That 29-28 is about to set up to let their alliance partners 4309 score. Uh, so you'll notice the defense still happening here. 
But in just a moment, you're going to notice a couple of the blue robots starting to converge here and some cool uh, anti, what I call anti-defense being played. So you'll notice right over here uh, that you have 2928 is looking uh, to actually counter the 4309 defense that you have, uh, I'm sorry, not the 4309 defense, the 4579 defense, that 4309 is trying to score onto that cargo ship. And you'll notice and watch this, uh, this hit here that I think is a very smart strategic play by the Blue Alliance to push them out of the way and make sure they're not uh, blocking them at all. And then, if we go back just a second, watch this turn right here. This is a really great way to get out of a defensive area because they're also trying to score as well too, right? So you'll notice that this spin move that they make and they just immediately go to the cargo ship as well. Watch this right here. There's that spin, boop, right in there and scoring right into the cargo ship. I mean, that's really awesome defense, that spin that they have uh, to get out of that defensive lock and score in the cargo ship. That's just good play. That's just good strategy. Uh, good driving as well, too. So as we let the match go through, we're going to pause about 90, and I want you to watch the strategy recognizing right here as we start to see the Blue Alliance is going to start now focusing more on the uh, what I'm going to call, I guess, from this the north side of the field instead of the south area. You still have some opportunities for them to score down here, but they're not looking at that. What they're looking at is where can I go because right now 4579 is just playing defense down in the south area of the alliance. So really cool on this, and watch how this shift happens where all these bots start to move to the north side of the field. You're, you're going to notice in just a little bit, though, they make a bit of a mistake, and there's going to be a little bit of a traffic jam here. This isn't a perfect match. You notice right here at about 79 seconds that Blue finds himself grouping up in a little bit uh, because 2928 wants to score on the other side of the cargo ship. But you're going to notice how they get out of this jam and start to score once again as we let the clock run. Red also just got, like, two fouls there. That's true, yeah. <laughs> that helps a little bit, right? Yeah. So you'll notice that they'll start to re-break up here now, and then Blue Lines really starts to score. A nice job up on the north side of the field once again by 4309, uh, scoring up top there, very nicely done by them. And it just they just start to separate a lot, it, and it seems that 4579 can't get the right target uh, to really go on for something like this. So at about 50 seconds here, what I want you to look at is 2980 is going to score and come back to assist on another pick once again. So 4309, they're going to assist him on this pick. Uh, and it's going to take them a little bit to set up. But once they're able to, watch how both robots break away in this lower corner right here and have the opportunity to score. So they're stuck a little bit here, but you see he's trying to set up that pick to make sure he gets through. And now both robots are clear and free as they get ready to set up for the rest of the end game of the match as well. So as I said, this is going to be kind of a mini analysis. I just want to point out how cool this ramp is. Like I was, I thought, I thought ramp bots, there is no way. I mean, look at, there's even this little gap right here. And I'm like, ramp bots, no way they're ever going to succeed. And this bot was extremely consistent. The 4309 bot uh, for the blue Alliance of just uh, getting that, that robot up on level three. Pretty cool. Uh, really, really, really like that strategy and really neat to go with as well. Uh, so as we let this uh, time run out here, I, I just want to read something. I had uh, actually the driver from 2928 reach out to me, uh, and I just want to read a little, about, a little bit about uh, what they said about the, uh, the match, uh, and they give a little bit of insight for it as well, too. So, um, so the driver's uh, name was uh, Jeff uh, reaching out, and he says, uh, a longtime fan of fun analysis and the driver 2928, and I have some insights for our strategy. Uh, one of the really cool things that they that we did, speaking of that person, was between semifinal two and semifinal four, uh, we swapped out our ground hatch intake for two extra drive sims. Interesting, right? Oh, wow. uh, bringing them to six drive sims. Why not go Neos? But that's okay. Uh, we <laughs> did it in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and went into that match uh, with much better acceleration and torque. Uh, and so... That's really interesting. Oh, Jet, I'm sorry. I read it wrong in there. I can't read my own writing sometimes. Uh, so I'm sorry, Jet from uh, 2928 uh, posted that. But, you know, th that's a really interesting thing to say, hey, you know, we need to make a change on something. And to be able to swap out uh, the 
you know, the way they did put two extra sims on there, like they must have planned for that, right? There's no way you could just be like, let's drill some extra holes and put a couple extra gears on and make two more sims yeah. in our drives. I mean, right I don't then? know how robots work, but I don't think that's something you could just slap <laughs> together. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> probably already got the holes for it. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's an awesome thing to have the capability to do. Because if it wouldn't have worked or if they needed to go back, I mean, they could go back to the ground hat, those motors on the ground hatch and take for the next series if that's what they needed or leave those. So that's a super awesome versatility thing that I think very few robots would be able to do. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that decision made, but hey, you know, if it worked this time, I mean. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you might you might not always have time to do that. Uh, yeah. Other, yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it's from there's some plan, wiring but... involved there. You know, you got to add something near CAN network. You know, there's a there's a couple things that you got to do to get that to work. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, so, uh, Jet just commented. Uh, he said we did plan for it, but actually, but we were overweight, so we had to take off two extra sims. Uh-oh. Okay. That makes <laughs> so sense. basically, they just had to put those sims back on. Mm, so they already gotcha. had the talons there and stuff. That that makes it uh, that makes more sense then. Okay. Well, thanks for the input, uh, by the way, Jet, for that Jet, Jet, Jet. So, uh, th- <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Uh, once again, you know, the, the Blue Alliance end up losing in the third semifinal match against the Red Alliance, but I thought they had a really cool strategy. Uh, it would have been really cool to, to see this uh, kind of move on. I was definitely rooting for Blue. Uh, like I said, I love the little ramp out there. Like, uh, just going for just the hatches and the ramp. I mean, what a what a great way, you know, for to, to contribute to your alliance and to uh, put put your alliance far in the elimination tournament. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and I have to say the driving's pretty good from watching the video. Yeah. Keep it up, you know. Just keep mm-hmm. practicing; it'll be uh, have a strong showing throughout the season. Absolutely. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up uh, for me, and I'm going to get hop off cam. But I just wanted to give some uh, some props to the Blue Alliance uh, over at PNW, who I don't think PNW really doesn't get enough love. Uh, for the most part, from a lot of us here in fun, because, uh, well, until recently, we didn't have a host up in PW, so uh, expect to pay more attention to PW in the future, and, and uh, can't wait to see more stuff going on in the PW later on. Yes, for sure. Because uh, it's definitely a region that is I like to watch. It's very interesting. And I love their camera view here because what you're going to see when we get into my matches <laughs> is that the rockets block huge chunks of what I'm talking about. So. Yeah, I think in mine, PJ, that the entire hab is blocked off on the blue side. So, yeah. unfortunately, you know, uh, I, I, I do say the ca- the camera work from the PNW, especially this year with the full field view on this, this is a very nice view. Um, you can't see what's scored in one rocket, but other than that, it's it's pretty good. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.